Hello, everyone. My name is Carlos Abad, and I'm a data center performance engineer at Intel. Please, at the end of the talk, give us a rating so we can keep improving by using your feedback. Feel free to approach me with any feedback you have at the end of the talk. Um, first of all, this is the legal disclaimer. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. I will give you the email from my lawyers. Uh, <laughs> and, and just so you guys know, uh, if you guys have any questions during the talk, please just stop me. And at the end of the slide, I will answer the question. I think there are some microphones over there. But I'm pretty sure I can just hear your uh, questions. So the first thing is about Intel and Scala. I have approached several of you during those these 24, last 24 hours, and many people ask me, like, wait a second, you work for Intel. I thought Intel, they, they were all in the CPU business, right? They do chips, right? They don't do software. Not at all, actually. Uh, Intel has a lot of people working uh, in data center technologies. We are in charge of squeezing the most performance out of the hardware. It's amazing how much you need optimizations in the Linux kernel to get that, those CPU features or to use at maximum your CPU. Moreover, Intel has been working for the last 10 to 15 years in optimizing other languages, like, for example, Java, optimizing the JVM, optimizing Python. We started optimizing Python recently, Node.js. And now, one year ago, I was named the lead performance uh, engineer at Intel for Scala. It's been a very interesting year, by the way. So all, just so you guys know, all the data and all the code we're going to show it here, it will be published online. And you guys will be able to grab it from GitHub, play with it, expand it if you want, if you like. Everything will be open source from our end. So the first thing that I want to talk about is what we are going to talk about, basically. <laughs> I'm going to show up a performance. Well, before we go, before we continue, how many people have ever done any profiling? Right, right. And how many of you have ever used benchmarks in Scala or any language? Very good, very good. That's amazing. Uh, so. One of the things we, when we started working in Scala, we found that there are not a lot of um, good benchmarks. And I'm going I'm to explain what I mean by good. And basically, I'm going to show a benchmark suite that we have developed based on big data, work, big, big data workloads. Uh, I'm going to show how we have used that benchmark suite to optimize the mutable hash map in Scala. And also, I'm going to show how once the code is open source, how you can grab that code and expand it with your own benchmarks easily. And the, and the benchmark suite will, the driver of the benchmark suite, will live with all the complexity for you. So why is this talk interesting for any of you? Well, if you work in Scala performance, it's obvious. Um, we are going to show a new benchmark suite, a methodology for benchmarking Scala for big data applications. For the rest of you, big data Scala developers, uh, it will, it, this is a tool that it will, it will allow any Scala developer to quickly create your own micro benchmark and expand this suite. I will explain more as we go in the presentation. So do we really need a new Scala benchmark? I'm pretty sure there, there are several talks here talking about new benchmarks, right? So the thing is that when one year ago, when we started working on Scala, we found that there are not uh, benchmark, Scala benchmarks based on big data applications. We have, for example, Scala Bench, which is a little bit outdated and is not based on big data workloads at all. We have also a lot of micro benchmarks. But those micro benchmarks do not show or reflect any of the information from big data benchmarks. And, 
And also, we have a Spark bench, for example. For those of you who don't know anything about the Spark, Spark is a big data processing framework. It's the most used open source big data processing framework out there. And it doesn't give any information about the Scala. It's not focused on the Scala. And moreover, when you want to run any big data workloads, like genomic processing, you need your own cluster. And that's a problem, right? Because it requires to have an infrastructure that you need to rent or you need to have. We have simplified all of that. So for those of you who don't know what the Spark is, Apache Spark is a framework, it's a processing framework that allows you to grab data and the framework itself will deal with the complexity of splitting the data in your data center, processing that data, uh, aggregating the results at the end. Pretty sure many of you know what the Spark does. And nowadays, the Spark is used, is used for applications like genome analysis, e-commerce, fraud detection. And it's written purely, almost purely in Scala. So what we did is that we grabbed real, real world workloads, like genomic processing, genomic benchmarks. And we uh, extracted performing information. We, we synthesized uh, lightweight Scala benchmarks that perform pretty much the same or hit the same hot spots at the, as the original application. But the, only the main difference here is that instead of having your big data application running for, let's say, uh, 24 hours, like my genomic pipeline was running the other day, uh, for in my entire Spark cluster, now I can do that in my own laptop. And I will get the same performance information. So the difference is huge, humongous. Not only how fast you can do that, from hours or days to minutes, but also the resources needed. You don't need a cluster anymore. Now you can do that on your own laptop. Incredible, right? So the way we created these uh, benchmarks or benchmark suite, this benchmark suite is made out of a bunch of micro benchmarks. At, and for each micro benchmark, we have created, we, we run a bunch of workloads, real world workloads. We work with res researchers all over the world with, from the genomic side to ask them, hey, how do you run your genomic workloads? What do you run? Can we access the same genomic files? Can we run it in our cluster? And then we run that in our own Spark cluster, and we extract performance data. That performance data gives us the places, or tells us, the places where our application is most used, the places or Scala, the Scala libraries or collections that are most used. And out of that information, we create one, each one of the um, micro benchmarks. And we did that over and over with a bunch of workloads, real, real life workloads, workloads that are used nowadays, today. This is not something that we make up. This is real workloads, big bench, used in high performance computing, a spark bench. They are trying to do it industry-wide, but we can say it's industry-wide benchmarking. Adam Genomics used worldwide. So out of that, we found a bunch of hot methods. We found a bunch of libraries that they were, they were getting hit over and over, that they need to get optimized. Like, for example, the hash map, the mutable hash map, the mutable tree set. And we, once we had that, that and this is exactly the part of the code that you are going to get once you go to GitHub. On GitHub, you, you already have all those benchmarks there for you to download. And by running the uh, benchmark suite, there is a driver that will take care of extracting all the information, all the profiling information for you. You don't have to do anything. If you have Java and Scala installed in your system, the driver will take care of extracting the performance information 
with different Java virtual machines, with different Scala versions, if you want to compare Scala versions, if you, if you want to compare, if you want to compare different uh, flags as well. And one of the most amazing features here is that th this benchmark suite is time-based profiling. And what I mean by that, nowadays, benchmarks as are based on repeating a task, let's say, 10,000 times, right? You repeat a, ta a task 10,000 times. But the problem is that in a real-life workload, that task will be run maybe a trillion times over, the, over 10 hours instead of 10 milliseconds. And that is the main difference here. Every micro benchmark we found, they were running for 10 milliseconds, one second. And I can tell you that Scala is run on top of the Java virtual machine. And after several minutes of running a workload, or seconds, the performance profiling the performance profile changes. And that's why we run the workload. Not only we run the workload with uh, each workload with a JVM warm-up sequence. So we warm up the Java virtual machine for you. You don't have to worry about that at all. And once the, the, the JVM is in a steady state, we start recording that for as long as you need, usually five minutes, three minutes of data, five minutes one hour of data, and we average all the performance results for you, so you don't have to worry about anything. It's beautiful and simple. That's what we, performance engineers, needed for a long time. Beautiful. <laughs> so this is the example output. Um, I'm really aware that people at the back cannot see, so that's why we have a magnification. <laughs> so uh, the driver will run each workload with different sizes, with different input sizes. So for example, for this hash, mutable hashmat benchmark, it will run the input with different sizes of the input, different input sizes. So you can see the scaling of your data or benchmark with different sizes. This is really important, because you don't know how big the service you are creating is going to be used in the future, right? At least in big data. And not only that, we can compare different Scala versions and different Java versions. Did you guys know that changing from Java 7 to Java 8 gives you 5% improvement in the hash map? I do. And now you guys do as well. Uh, so now, by using, this is the type of information you guys will get by using these benchmarks and this benchmark suite. And when you create your own benchmark, you will be able to see the same differences. What happens if I change the JVM? Some things are better with a server of flags than with other flags. So this is an example where we have used this benchmark suite to optimize the Scala. So we run the um, we run this bench uh, we run this benchmark suite, and we realized that the mutable hash map was not scaling. So the performance of the mutable hash map was getting degraded with a certain data pattern. So we had a genomic application, Adam, that it was, it's written in Scala. It's run on top of a Spark. And by using the hash map in, a, in different ways, in a certain ways, and with, in a certain way, and with a certain data pattern, it actually, um, it actually uh, clocked the hash map. So we found that by modifying, modifying the um, implementation with an um, opportunistic red black tree instead of a, a linear hash map, we changed the performance of the hash map from uh, linear to logarithmic. So who, who knows what logarithmic versus linear means? It's a programmer's joke. Don't worry, it's not an interview. Um, so yeah, so that means that as we grow the size of the hash map, and instead of the performance of the, ha of the time to retrieve data from the hash map, it scales with the, if it's linear, it will scale with the number of elements in the hash map. I if it's logarithmic, it will not scale linearly, it will scale this way. So that means that um, instead of ha when, the difference between having 1 million elements and 10 million elements is not 10x in performance. It's much less than that. It was 10x. 
And this is the example benchmark. This is an example of how, once we put the data on GitHub, you will be able to grab that uh, code and expand it with your own workloads. And it's very easy, actually, just by extending the trade benchmark that we have created. The driver automatically recognizes your code, automatically recognizes the trade. And by implementing these two methods, warm up and run, by defining them, the benchmark will, will be able to use your code, use your benchmark, use your new micro benchmark, and run with different configurations this benchmark over and over for minutes or hours. You, now you can run your benchmark for minutes, and it will obtain all the information, all the profile information. It will do the averages. It will do the devia deviation, a standard deviation. It will uh, actually obtain garbage collection information and profiling for you. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Just to finish my talk, um, um, I want to say what we have achieved so far. What we have achieved so far is actually um, we have been able to create this new framework. Uh, it's not only framework, but a Scala benchmark suite. And by using this benchmark suite, we have been successful several times. We expect to increase the number of micro benchmarks over time as we find more and more bottlenecks. And we would like to call the community to help us increasing the micro benchmarks, increasing the benchmark suite, including more micro benchmarks that they think they, they are useful and they can be, um, they can be used for uh, their own, uh, for, uh, it can be very useful for them. So, and that's it. Any, anyone has a question? Maybe I have brushed too much. Yes, sir. You hear me? Oh, it would be awesome if you share some specific about that hash map. What do you do? Is like if, if you are using certain like bad pattern that you are always hitting the same hash like collisions. Mm -hmm. Do you do you know when you are extending you know hash map? Then you decide oh I'm switching to the trees or how does your optimization works? That would yeah. be really awesome to hear. So the optimization will be actually uh, we hope to uh, push it into the main repo at some point in the future, close future, hopefully. And basically, optimization, the, the way it works right now is uh, without going into too much detail, but the hash map basically right now creates a linked list in each one of the entries. And when that, uh, if you are really, really unlucky, as the genomic guys are really, really unlucky with their hashes, because their hashes, as you guys know, genome, I didn't know this, but uh, genome information has four letters. And they're always hashing the, ha hitting the same four hashes. So, only four hashes are using a, a very big hash map. Not only, um, it's not actually 100% of the way I'm oversimplifying. I'm super, simpl oh, super oversimplifying. But basically, the idea is that because of the data pattern where they use the hash map, they were actually clocking the, the, the hash map much more than they should. And we found that. And they were actually saturating a linked list. So they were, by hitting the hash map, they were always going through a linked list. So we changed that. So right now, if, if the linked list gets too long, we change that linked list to a tree, a red black tree, a self-balancing tree. So by going through a tree, it's much faster than a linked list, right? So that's, that's how we did it. Mm -hmm. Hello. Uh, thank you for your talk, but um, maybe I missed something, but where is the link to GitHub? Uh. <laughs> okay, thank it you. It will be on my Twitter. <laughs> Sorry about that. I forgot to include it in the talk. Um, I, okay. will, I, will have, I will just post it on GitHub, on mm, Twitter. And the second question. Uh, you show the test. Uh, performance test. Is this test running in uh, Spark, in local Spark? Yeah, it is. Or it's running in a synthetic environment? This one? No, no, uh, uh, the code. Show the code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
This code? Yeah, so you, uh, s this is an example of benchmark. Mm -hmm. You prepare some data and next performs a test. Mm -hmm. And is this test running inside the Spark, local Spark, or a distributed Spark, or lock it, or, or, or um, ra just run in, into, I don't know, like synthetic environment like GVM at all? So, um, well, first of all, uh, let me clarify, a Spark is run on top of the JVM. Yeah, but... I was just kidding, obviously, I was just kidding. But, um, uh, to, so this is, what I meant by this is like, this is how you, um, once you have the hotspots analyzed or extracted from a Spark, you can uh, grab that piece of code of hot methods and copy paste that hot method into uh, this trade, implementing this trade. And this will be run in a synthetic environment. But you mentioned that it's possible to check for all synchronization stuff, uh, data communication stuff into Spark in previous slides. Something Did like. Did I say that? Yeah. Synchronization. Oh, yeah, I mentioned that. Yes, I mentioned that. And how can I check and measure it with this in a synthetic environment? Yeah, synthetic environment. Well, for that, we use a thing called Java Flight Recorder. So once you have extracted your uh, hot methods, if the hot methods expand that into different threads, the, you will hit the same synchronization methods as we have seen, by the way, in some hot methods and some benchmarks. And Java Flight Recorder is very good at capturing those synchronization issues. It will show you how many times those threads are uh, just holding because of uh, synchronization issues. Okay. So that's how, that's how we obtain that data. And the last stuff. Did I get you right that first you analyze the pattern of usage, mm -hmm. and next you're trying to find the bottlenecks, and next put bottlenecks into your benchmark tool and optimize it? Okay, thank you. Rather than bottlenecks, I would like to say hot methods. Okay. I guess th this is going to be it. So thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh,